Once in the forest you'll find a fabulous banquet, a fairy wand. If you close your eyes and you open your mind, the veil disappears and you see it all. Hi my angels, it's Haley Reese and for today's video I am going to be reading some extremely spooky, true ghost stories. Today was just kind of a gloomy day and I was thinking to myself that I wanted to read some spooky stories so I went ahead and started browsing on my phone and I found a thread of what looks to be absolutely terrifying ghost stories and I figured since I haven't done a video like this in a while on my channel why not come on here and so we can read them together. <laughs> Before I get into today's video though, I would just very quickly like to thank today's video sponsor, Philo. On Philo you can watch shows like The Walking Dead and many, many more for just $16 a month, which compared to cable costs is so good. You're able to record your favorite shows and watch them later. And the best part of all is that there are no cords or cables, so it is cord cutting and it is available on almost any device. So if you guys want to check out Philo, you can click the link at the very top of my description. You can have a seven day free trial to see if you enjoy it. You won't have to insert your credit card or anything, so there won't be any sneaky payments if it's not something you enjoy. But if it is something you enjoy, then you'll be able to sign up and start watching all of your favorite shows. So thank you so much to Philo for sponsoring today's video. And without further ado, Let's get into these spooky stories because I've been dying to read some of them. So the titles of a lot of these seem really spooky and I'm hoping that they actually scare me and you because a lot of times some things that I find online are kind of corny ghost stories, so I'm excited. Okay, so the first story is called The Cell Phone. Why does that sound so freaky already? <laughs> A couple of months ago, my friend's cousin, a single mother, bought a new cell phone. After a long day of work, she came home, placed her phone on the counter, and went to watch TV. Her son came to her and asked if he could play with her new phone. She told him not to call anyone or mess with text messages, and he agreed. At around 11.20, she was drowsy, so she decided to tuck her son in and go to bed. She walked to his room and saw that he wasn't there. She then ran over to her room to find him sleeping on the bed with the phone in his hand. Relieved, she picked the phone out of his hand and inspected it. Browsing through it, she noticed only minor changes, such as the background, banner, etc. But then she opened up her saved pictures. She began deleting the pictures he had taken until only one new picture remained. When she saw it, she was in disbelief. It was her son, sleeping on her bed, but the picture was taken by someone else above him, and it showed the left half of an elderly woman's face. That is so creepy. I've always had this fear with like photos being taken that you don't know about and I think that was like one of the creepiest parts of Dear David to me. So that one was really creepy. And I believe it to be true. I That's totally probable. That could definitely happen. The next one is called The Rocking Horse. One night when I was maybe 10 to 12, I had trouble falling asleep. My bedroom was the entire top floor of our house with my bed and such being on the left side and storage closets and a big play area on the right. I was lying in bed when I heard a noise from the other side of the room and see the rocking horse begin to rock. It was sitting just outside one of the storage closet doors. It proceeded to rock its way halfway across the room and stopped dead under the ceiling light. At this point, I was freaking out and buried my head under the blankets and never peeked out until the morning. It was all confirmed to not be a dream as the rocking horse was still in the middle of my room when I woke up. Furthermore, I got a stern reprimand from my parents for being up out of bed playing with my toys well past my bedtime. Their bedroom was directly below the storage closet slash play area and they had heard the creaking of the rocking horse shuffling across the room. Ooh, <laughs> that's so creepy. I think the idea of like, a rocking horse or a rocking chair starting to go on its own is just so creepy in general. So I could see that being 100% true personally. The next one is titled The Whispers and that sounds really creepy. This is a story I do not often tell. I promise sincerely that this has scarred me for life. And although I have looked into psychological explanations for what I heard and natural explanations for what occurred, they remain unsatisfactory. When I was a child, I was scared of the dark. I swore to my mother I heard voices in it. They were not evil, but they were not familiar, and so they scared me. 
It was not uncommon in the middle of the night for me to wake up and hear whispers, as I would call them when asking my mom. She figured they were just bumps in the night and typical kids' nightmare material. I tried to explain to her that there was more than that and that they sounded different from one another to the way that people's voices do. On some nights, I would get so scared from these whispers that I would sleep in my mom's bed with her. It was an added bonus that the bathroom was directly outside of her bedroom door for my late night tinkles. <laughs> I should add at this point that when walking out into the hall to go to the bathroom, you look directly down the stairs that would lead you into the living room on the first floor, as my mom's bedroom was on the second floor. On one such night around Christmas, I woke up and felt the need to relieve myself. I walked out from the door and distinctly heard the phrase, look, and to my astonishment, a red light, almost like a spotlight, was cast upon the wall at the very bottom of the stairs. The light had no other source. It was, a, it was by itself, and I was transfixed by it. Being a little kid and it being only a few days away from Christmas, I knew what this light was. It was Santa. How else could he get into my house and know that I was being a good boy? I was so excited I began walking down the stairs to greet him, picking up my pace after the second step as it began to creep off the wall and fade into the darkness of my living room. That's when I heard him, a very strong masculine voice, different from the first, not at all like my father's, not to say he isn't masculine, it was just distinctively different. It said, stop, right now, go back up those stairs. I listened turned around, and what happened next, I am not sure I would believe if someone had told me this same story. After reaching the top of the stairs, I heard a very loud crash that sent me running back to my mother's bed where I jumped straight under the covers and stayed the whole night. When we awoke the next morning, our Christmas flower lights that glowed red my mother had put on the railing down the stairs were pulled straight down to the bottom of the stairs, some broken from what seemed to be a forceful tear, laying in a single pile. The dry sink in my living room had fallen from the wall. My mother could not explain it. My mother was worried we had been victims of a home invasion. My sister was crying. There was nothing missing. Nobody had broken in, and there did not seem to be a reason that this happened. And then I saw it, and I kept quiet about it because I was afraid I could not force the words out of my mouth. There on the edge of the wooden dry sink, which had been facing up, were three indentations where the finish on the wood had been worn, almost as if a forceful grip. Something down there had grabbed it and threw it, and that's what the bang was. I was mortified. After that day, I never heard a single voice again. I do not like to imagine what was waiting downstairs for me that night, if it was anything at all, but I can tell you that the reality was that something had physically acted upon two things in my house near the bottom of that stairwell. After this, I had never heard another whisper again. Which is sad, because in some ways, I would have liked to thank the man that had stopped me from going down those stairs. This happened when I was seven. I am 20 years old now, and because of this incident, I am still afraid of the dark, especially shadowy stairwells. Wow. Okay, so what I gather from this is that he has a gift of communicating with the other side, and that perhaps something darker and more sinister was drawn to that purity of a child and the innocence and the fact that he could see them and hear them and perhaps the whispers are just ghosts that were around in the house and that it saved him that night who knows i'm kind of taking a guess here but i really liked that story this one is called the grandfather my grandfather told me this story about how one time he was sitting in a chair in front of the house when he heard his wife repeatedly calling for him inside the house the thing is, my grandmother had passed away a few years before that, but he told me that the voice was so pressing he actually got up to look inside the house. As soon as he got inside, he heard a loud crash behind him and turned around to see that the chair he had been sitting in moments ago had been crushed by the cast iron gutter that fell on it. If he hadn't come inside the house, he would have been seriously injured. I don't know if it's paranormal or not, but every time I think about it, it sends chills down my spine. Wow. <laughs> I am a firm believer that when the people that we love and our family members pass, that they're forever around us, protecting us and guiding us throughout life. And this is just a story that reassures me that this is true because what I believe happened there was that his wife's spirit knew what was about to happen and saved him. I really liked that one. Okay, I'm gonna read one more because this one looks so interesting and it's really long. It's called The Satellite Images. A 
A friend of mine showed me how to use Google Maps. I'm sure you've seen it. It lets you use satellite images to look at locations all over the world. A few years ago, I was in a car accident. Since then, I don't really leave the house that often. It's difficult, and the idea of seeing a car drive by me makes me feel lightheaded. I was fascinated by the fact that I could see all over the world almost like being there. I could virtually walk down the streets and it felt like I was really there. I became instantly hooked. It gave me a real eye on the world. I could go to almost any major city, and I did. <laughs> I'd seen the streets in China, Japan, Germany, and England, so many places. I've even gone to tourist attractions like the Great Barrier Reef and Dracula's Castle. My favorite was to go to random places in major cities and see how many people and animals I could find. The faces of the people were always blurred to protect their privacy, but it was still enjoyable to see them out there, enjoying their life, walking like it was no big deal. She must have good taste, I laughed. I zoomed in closer and noticed the gray bag she carried on a gray and purple shoulder strap. She was walking in a relaxed manner, one hand trailing the wall beside her. I bet if I could have seen her face, I would see that she was smiling. I began to feel a little bit sad. I let my hands fall onto the arms of my wheelchair and looked at her for a minute more. I wished that I could be there, walking so carefree with her. That wouldn't happen though until I died. I was stuck in this chair. I sighed and zoomed out of Tokyo. Enough of this for tonight. I turned off the computer and went back to bed. I got up early and decided to look around Paris. Paris was always fun. I liked the look of the city with all of the old, beautiful buildings and so many people to watch. I randomly zoomed into an area and saw a street lined with old brick buildings, a few small shops and an old tan brick church. Ahead was an intersection and dozens of people walked by. A balding businessman walked quickly past, looking back at an old woman, hair covered with a scarf carrying a large purse. A curvy woman in black pants that were too tight stared into a store window and two women led a group of small children around the corner. I spun the view around to see a few more times, and then I saw something peculiar. Sitting on the bench at a bus stop were two people. One of them was a young woman with her feet stuck out in front of her in a relaxed manner. She was wearing a pair of red sneakers, like my own. I was startled for a moment as I noticed the black pants, white t-shirt, and black hooded jacket. Her dark brown hair was tied loosely behind her head. A gray bag sat on the bench beside her. The shoulder strap looked over her shoulder. This is crazy, I thought. It can't possibly be the same woman. This is a different country, different continent even. How could it be her? This was stupid. It wasn't as if these were live photographs. They were taken ahead of time and then stored. It's not like she was in two places at once. She could just be a traveler. Besides, without seeing her face, it was impossible to tell if it truly was the same person. Brown hair is probably the most common hair color in the world. Those red sneakers were something I purchased online. I'm sure a million other people did too. I shook my head and went to fix some lunch. When I got back online, I decided to look at Berlin. I picked a random street as usual and it looked pretty empty. There were brick buildings lining the streets, looking more like factories than anything else. There were also empty lots full of long grass and piled gravel. There wasn't much to see at all, really. There was a line of motorbikes and a car with two German flags sticking out from it. After more searching, I found one kid. He looked like he was dressed for school, a jacket thrown over his shoulder bag. He was a jacket thrown over his bag. He was intently looking at some kind of mobile device. I was disappointed. I started to leave, but then I caught something out of the corner of my eye. I turned to the view and there they were those dang red sneakers. She was standing on the street corner next to some kind of signpost. She had a hand on the post looking down the street as if waiting to cross. I stared in shock. How could she be there too? Even if she was traveling, there's no way I would find her every time. Even finding her in Paris would have been one heck of a coincidence, but this, this was crazy. Was this some kind of a joke? Had Google decided to play a prank on its users that use their product so much? It would have to have been a joke. I did a quick search looking for a note about a woman that shows up like Waldo. There was nothing. I looked through articles on strange things you can see in Google Maps, but none of them mentioned the woman that travels the world with you. This was crazy. Had my self-imposed isolation driven me mad? Had I become so lonely that I created a hallucination for myself? Leaving the Berlin image on my screen, I sent a text message to a friend asking him to look at the locations. I asked him if he saw the same woman. Then I waited, hands sweating, heart thumping in my chest. I jumped when my phone beeped with a return text message 10 minutes later. The text read, 
I see the lady you're talking about in Berlin. I didn't see her in Paris or Tokyo. Is this some kind of a game or what? Are you okay? I didn't respond and start returning to the locations in Tokyo and Paris. There she was. She was there, but it was different. She no longer sat on the bus stop bench in Paris. She was standing in front of it, looking for something in her bed. In Tokyo, she was blocks away, squatting down to pet a cat. I shivered. Who was she? What was happening? I switched the map to Brussels. It was another city street. It was lined with old looking buildings with shops on the ground level and what I guessed were apartments above. I quickly scanned the streets. They were empty, other than a stocky woman in a bright blue sweater. I did a second sweep. She wasn't there. I sighed in relief. I couldn't believe I was getting so worked up about this. It was nothing but a coincidence. I stopped, my eyes frozen on the screen. There was a building at the point of a fork in the road, white with a black ironwork framed balcony jutting from the second floor. I hadn't seen her as I'd been looking at the sidewalks. There she stood, standing on the balcony, her head tilted in the direction of the camera, almost like she was coyly looking towards me. My breath got caught in my throat. I switched to Sydney. She was leaning against the wall, inside of the doorway of a bright blue Carrick's Pharmacy building. London showed her getting ready to step onto a red double-decker bus, her head turned over her shoulder. She was everywhere I looked. She stood on a brick sidewalk on a bridge in Venice. And in Hong Kong, she stood between a Wing Lung Bank and a McDonald's, adjusting the strap on her bed. In each picture, she came closer and closer to looking directly at me with her blurred out face. I didn't know what to do. I couldn't call the police. Should I send screenshots to Google? I clenched my fists tightly and closed my eyes. Who was she? Why was she following me? Was I following her? I wish I could see the expression on her face, know what she saw when she looked back at me. I wanted to get out of my chair and run. Why is it the only thing that made me feel free again was now the thing that made me feel trapped? I typed the name of my town and zoomed into a random street. It was a couple of miles from my house. The gates to the city park were shown in the clarity of daylight despite it being night here. There she was. There. There she was. She was only a few miles from my house standing under the ironwork arch that stated the name of the park. She looked directly at the camera, directly at me. I felt I might throw up. She was near me and she was watching for me. She was coming for me. What did she want? I typed the name of the apartment complex where I live. I could see the outside of the building. The parking lot was full of cars and there were a few blurred out children on the playground. I searched everywhere for her. She wasn't in the parking lot or on the sidewalks not hiding between the buildings or standing in the playground. I even scanned each of the cars behind bushes and each of the blurred windows. She wasn't there. I curled tightly around myself and lay my head on the desk. This place was safe. I didn't leave the apartment anyways. I would never use Google Maps again. I would never see her again. She could stay at the park for all I cared. I smiled to myself and was surprised to find a tear slipping down my face. I'm safe, I whispered to myself. As I said it, there was a knock at the door. A chill ran down my spine. I had a camera hooked to my computer that showed me who was at the front door, which made it easier for me with my mobility issues. I slowly reached for the control to show myself who was outside, but my hand trembled furiously. As I touched the control, I realized my mistake. The last of Google's images that I'd seen had only shown the outside of the building, just the outside. I looked at the screen and saw a woman in a white t-shirt, black pants, black hooded jacket, and carrying a gray bag with a purple and gray striped shoulder strap. Of course, there were those red sneakers. She looked directly at the camera, her face still a complete blur. As I tried to stifle a scream, she raised her hand and knocked loudly on my front door. When I opened it, nobody was there. What did I let in? Wow, that was a really good one. I don't know if that one's true, but I really, really enjoyed that one. What on earth do you think was happening in that last story that I just read? Like, do you guys think it was some sort of a spirit? Do you think when she knocked on the door, he let it in? What do you think of that story? Did any of these scare you? Please, 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 please drop some comments down below and let me know what you guys thought of these. I actually thought they were pretty good. They gave me some spooks. <laughs> and I enjoyed them. So I hope that you guys enjoyed them too. And that is it for today's video. Thank you so much again to Philo for sponsoring today's video. Like I said, if you guys click the link at the top of my description, you can get a free seven day trial without having to insert your credit card, which is awesome. 
And yeah, thank you so much for sponsoring. If you guys are new to my channel or you are just not yet subscribed but you do enjoy my videos, I would absolutely love it if you would go ahead and click that subscribe button. I post a ton of videos so I don't want you to miss when I upload. And please give this video a big thumbs up because it makes my heart super, super happy and I really, really appreciate it when you guys do that. So please do that. Remember my loves, do all things with kindness. And until next time, I love you.